Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie. Thank you for plugging in with us today. Congratulations on choosing this episode of one of the best, most informative electric vehicle podcasts where we talk about all things EV and the future of sustainable and electric transportation over here. Smart choice of you today. I am excited to dive into today's topic of charging deserts, specifically the ones in the U.S. Of course, always open to discussion about other places in the world, but that's where I'm located and that's where Out of Spec is in a lot of our listeners. Although I do look at where y'all are all calling in from. Very cool to see all over the planet who is enjoying what we're putting out there on the Out of Spec podcast. So again, charging deserts in 2024, very few places in the U.S. have no chargers of any kind. But in states with lower populations, there are naturally fewer chargers. So important questions arise about reliability, speed, convenience of these chargers in remote areas. Where are these chargers located? Has the coverage evolved over time? Spoiler, yes. What regulations push to fill in these gaps? And how do people manage without charging along long stretches? So let's plug in for this topic today, right now. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Before we dive in, what exactly is a charging desert? Well, like a food desert, a charging desert is an area with little to no access to that resource resource, specifically electric vehicle charging stations, which makes it difficult for EV owners to travel through these regions without careful planning, pretty much. And if you ask me, you should always be planning your EV road trips because that's fun. But charging deserts are typically found in rural and remote areas where the population density is low and the demand for EV charging stations is just maybe not high enough to justify the investment from private companies to put in charging infrastructure. So the lack of infrastructure can then perhaps deter people from adopting an EV, creating a cycle that's hard to break, the chicken and the egg. We're seeing that break more and more though as we continue on. So let's talk about where these charging deserts are. Generally, you will find them in parts of the Midwest, some areas of the South, and then various remote regions across the country. And if you're planning a trip, It is crucial to use tools like PlugShare and a better route planner and whatever map you have for charging amenities that maybe might come with the EV that you own or whatever resource that you like, but I do appreciate those. And then ensure that you have charging options along the way. Probably you do. I've done EV road trips, so has the team. There are charging options along most ways. Sometimes it does get a little bit sparse though. I did talk about all of my... EV road trip best tips and advice in a recent podcast that I'll put in the show notes, but feel free to watch that, listen to it if you haven't already, or share it with your EV road trip buddies as well. Some people have found it useful already. Luckily, 64% of Americans live within two miles of a public charging station, and those who live closest to chargers also tend to view EVs more positively. That is noted from, that's noted in a good bit of research, but I was reading this recent report from the Pew Research Center on electric vehicle charging infrastructure in the U.S., and this report was published on their site in May of this year, and I strongly suggest you go read it for yourself because I did find it quite interesting. The number of EV charging stations, as they write in the report, has more than doubled since the year 2020, and in December of 2020, the Department of Energy reported that there were nearly 29,000 public charging stations nationwide. And by February of this year, 2024, the number had increased to to 61,000 stations. And so that means plenty and plenty more charging ports, actually. So over 95% of the American public now live in a county that has at least one public EV charging station. 95%. EV charging stations are most accessible to those who live in urban areas. 60% of urban residents live less than a mile from the nearest EV charger, public EV charger, compared with 41% of those in the suburbs and just 17% of rural America. Maybe let's start with Alaska, a state known for its vast landscapes and sparse population. According to PlugShare, Alaska has a total of 15 fast chargers 
However, traveling beyond cities like Fairbanks becomes nearly impossible without careful planning due to the limited charging infrastructure. I know some adventurous folks who have taken on big adventures like this, expeditions. They use solar panels to charge their EV batteries and other really creative ways to, to find energy. One thing of note is that, yeah, we've seen a lot of stories about cold in EVs, but there are plenty of EVs in countries like Norway that are very, very cold. So don't let that headline skew your true interpretation of the data and that temperature does affect EVs, but not to the detrimental degree that kind of it has been blown up to be. There are specific scenarios for why it's gone so poorly and led to a clear, huge um, news coverage. Okay. Alaska, now maybe Hawaii. The state of Hawaii does not come out as well when it turns to just ubiquitous EV charging infrastructure, but luckily it is much smaller than Alaska. On Oahu, there's pretty good coverage of EV charging, and with the chargers, most electric vehicles should be able to go anywhere they would like. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the fast chargers, um, or I mean, it does seem like the fast chargers might be clogged up due to the low number of ports per charger, especially when many people need to charge at once. There are two Tesla supercharger locations on the island as well. On Maui, there are a total of five DC fast chargers. One of these is actually one of the new Nevi sites that we've mentioned in an earlier podcast. There are few chargers on, their, on this island, and most of them are pretty slow, so it would be difficult to trust that there's always spots available, and it would take a lot longer. The island is small. It seems like you can get a lot down in 150 miles of range. With most electric vehicles today, um, they, they can do that no problem. The main Hawaiian island also has EV chargers, but mostly 50 kilowatt chargers and not a ton of them. Okay, so let's start with the loneliest road in America, which is a fitting name for Route 50 through uh, from through Nevada and Utah. And I say Nevada like that uh, because I want to. So I don't really care if you disagree. So first, let's look at our options with the faster charging. If you're looking here, I've got PlugShare pulled up. You can't even really see Route 50 here or Route 50, but here it is um, kind of through the bottom middle, the bo uh, kind of through just the middle of Utah and Nevada. And it's got some options, right? But if I'm on a if I'm on a road trip, I'm probably going to want some fast charging. So if I change the filter to 150 kilowatt charging and up, oof, that disappears. Route 50 disappears. That is not great. Between basically Scipio, Scipio, Utah, and Fernley, Nevada, there are no 150 plus kilowatt chargers at this time, which means you have to do about 479 miles without those which is not super easy, not super feasible uh, or safely in any in any EV, maybe hypermiling, you know, a lucid air or something like that. But if we do allow for 50 kilowatt charging to be enough for us, change the filter there. It, it does look like there are stretches that will be filled out, but to make that all possible, we're still having stretches of up to 190 miles that we have to cover. And slow charging and pretty long distances doesn't make the best mix for an EV road trip, it's definitely doable, but you're going to want to take your time. In addition, some of the stations do have mixed reviews. We looked into it along here. So you would really hope that these chargers are working or you could be stuck in the middle of nowhere for even longer than you would just charging slow. So let's explore some other challenges within the US. I-70, we know all about that in Colorado. Um, it goes through the middle of the country, really. I-70 is right here. And if I actually bring up a U.S. Uh, roadmap, then you can see it here right through the middle of the country. You can see I-70. So you would think, you know, I-70 should be fine. But there is some sparse sparseness in the charging options through the mountains, which you might think would be a hard spot, right? Mountains, it might not be the easiest place to put in infrastructure. This route, which we take to race to Vegas, you know, you've seen it before. Kyle has driven this route many times over on Out of Spec Reviews and uh, motoring. And there does come about a bit of, of a bottleneck here. And you should tune into the latest race to Vegas that the team did. Part one is out as of now on Out of Spec Motoring. There's a bit of a bottleneck in Green River, Utah. Uh, it has about 100 plus miles to the next charger with in both directions on I-70, so east or west. But not only this, it has four Electrify America dispensers here at this little coffee shop. I've actually been there. 
and eight version two Tesla superchargers. The version two superchargers are sharing power and overheating easily from reporting lately. Electrify, Electrify, luckily the Electrify America station seem to have pretty good reviews lately. You can see here on plug share right now, June 30th. That's today when I'm fil filming, all four stations are working. So that's great. Keep it up. Uh, the location is an easy spot where there could be a charging queue due to the low amount of no, low number of ports, not only there, but in the area. So to skip that spot, you would need to drive more than 200 miles on a high-speed highway that is easily exposed to wind, which reduces efficiency. And there's also mountain regions along the way. So that elevation would affect your efficiency as well. That's something to note. Would love to know if y'all have driven through there. There are also other parts of the I-70 stretch that have wind, long stretches, and elevation changes between chargers. It's not just here, but that's one interesting example. So let's talk about U.S. Route 2. You can see it up here at the top of the U.S. It's Montana to North Dakota with uh, limited infrastructure across rural area areas. And I would love to know, is anyone driving here? This one is nearly impossible to drive with an electric vehicle. I, I don't, I don't want to say it, but it's true. Between Columbia Falls in Montana and M Minot, uh, North Dakota, there are about 780 miles and only two 50 kilowatt chargers on the way. Uh, both appear to be operational, but two of them with one plug each and 307 miles between them makes this a pretty sketchy expedition for most electric vehicles, not to mention the long charging times that would be would be required. So if I clear this out and again, edit the filters, just uh, up to, you know, 100, 150, and look up here, there uh, just there just aren't those options. So the rest of the route is better, but there are still mostly a few 50 kilowatt chargers, and there are almost no 150 kilowatt chargers on Route 2. Northern Montana does not have much EV charging at all, as you can see here as well. So this does sound like maybe a challenge someone could take on. Maybe Kyle should be sent to the northern part of America and try to go from coast to coast. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about Interstate 90. So this is a freeway in the United States of America. As you can see, it goes basically from Washington all the way over to Maine. This one is better since Electrify America has been at work here. And I have Tesla on the filter now because actually there are a lot of uh, Tesla superchargers along this route. They are the older version two superchargers and they're not open to other automakers. Those lucky Ford and Rivian owners who have the agreement with Tesla who now have access to the supercharging network as of today, they're the only ones with using the adapters. Um, so actually I've not seen this many version two superchargers in a row along a route like this. They are 150 kilowatts max and they'll split the power if someone parks next to you. There's a lot of Electrify America on this route because they've been a, a working here along I-90 and hopefully they are available when we want them to be. And if you can see, there is, yeah, just parts of South Dakota, as you can see here, and Wyoming, just really few chargers. Moving on to US Route 83 from North Dakota to Texas, there are gaps in coverage, particularly in the Northern states. I think we're seeing kind of a trend there. I'll bring up US 83 right now. As you can see, it just cuts right through the middle of the country. And this one is kind of interesting because for example, between Bismarck, North, North Dakota, and Pierre, South Dakota, there is about a 205-mile stretch with no charging. Some patches through Kansas and Texas have just no charging at all. And as EV technology continues to evolve and infrastructure investments grow, the goal is to eliminate these charging deserts that we're seeing here and develop these, this critical infrastructure across North America. Government initiatives and private sector collaborations are crucial in expanding the network of fast chargers and re improving reliability. I'm not saying that these charging deserts are necessarily like, oh my gosh, why are they charging deserts? It makes sense. These are less populated rural areas that perhaps have a low distribution of EV ownership and also to prove that a site is worth putting in, it needs to be utilized. It needs to eventually pay itself, pay for itself. And that's hard to do if no one's using it. 
And if we go back to this Pew Research Center study that I was talking about earlier, I did want to note, as uh, written in the report mentioned earlier, that since the IRA's tax credits became active, the number of EV charging stations nationwide has increased almost 30%, but rural parts of the U.S. have a slightly faster growth rate in their total number of charging uh, compared to urban areas. So that's about 34% versus 29%. Even so, access to public EV charging remains heavily concentrated in urban areas, makes sense, which accounts for nearly 90% of all the stations in the U.S. as of February of this year, 2024. So I do think that's interesting. We've seen a higher growth rate in the other areas in the United States that aren't urban. And still, you know, I think there's obviously a bit of work to do. There are some charging deserts. Mostly the question I get with EV road trips is, can you really get anywhere that you want to in an EV? Personally, I have been able to with the EV road trips that I have done. I just completed one from Tennessee to Colorado. I've done from Colorado to the absolute edge of Nevada, Nevada on the Lake Tahoe. And it was it was great. It, it worked. Um, it's definitely, like I said, a different experience, but that's for a different podcast. Questions I have for you, my listener, is have you encountered a charging desert while driving your electric vehicle? Were you prepared for it? Were you not? What was the experience like? For those living in states with sparse charging networks, how do you manage to drive long stretches or adapt to ensure that your EV is practical for that use? I think for everyday use, it would be practical if you have at-home charging, seems fine, but to get around longer stretches when there's not tons of public infrastructure, I'm sure that's difficult. And if you were an early, early adopter and you watched the landscape change over time, what has that been like? Are there places that you used to have a hard time maybe driving electric that are now better? I have run into a bunch of you that have actually been doing road trips, whether it be for work or for fun, over thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of miles of road. And I'm sure that you've seen it change. The infrastructure has been growing like crazy. And I have a feeling that some of you have some fun stories. Do you think that the government should prioritize expanding EV infrastructure in remote or less populated areas or focus more on urban centers? Or is there a totally other focus that you think should be above this? Let me know why. Thank you for plugging in with me today on this exploration of charging deserts. If I missed one that you're curious about, let me know. Maybe that's one you've experienced, but I'm sure there might be others out there. Luckily, as you saw on the plug share map, it is over. It is really populated with EV charging. You can barely see through all the orange spots on the map at this point, which I think is a good sign, but it's important to highlight where these charging deserts are and why we see them. Drive safe, stay charged, and I will most likely talk to you soon on the next episode of the Out of Spec podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, y'all.